he that believeth not God have made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. Glory to God. And so uh, that's our scripture of impact tonight. You may want to jot it down and we're going to have prayer. But what I wanted you to understand tonight is that I have a few things uh, based on what I call the kingdom points uh, in regard to prayer. And um, each one is called a king point. And so I want to share that with you first before we pray so that when we pray, you will understand the dynamics of where we're coming from when we do pray. Sometimes we pray amiss. Sometimes we ask and we're not uh, in full faith when we're asking, we're doubting when we're asking. But nevertheless, I wanted to just hit these king points, these kingdom points in regard to prayer. Uh, first king point says no one, and I mean that emphatically, no one can really regulate the temperature of your prayer. That's between you and God, excuse me. But your prayer should be fervent. Do you agree? Your prayer should be fervent. And that's coming from James uh, chapter five, verse 16. It says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. Why? Because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. With that in mind, our prayer should be fervent. It should be fervent because we've got to break through the heavenlies. You know that the enemy of God called Satan, called the devil, called that old dragon, resides in the, in the heavenlies. Amen. In the airwaves. And it's his, his purpose is to try to block your prayer to try to hinder your prayers, but to try to stop them from getting to the throne of God. And so our antidote for that, God has given us to pray fervently so that we can break through, glory to God, so that our prayers can avail. And what it means to avail is to be able to conquer. It means to be able to like shoot an arrow. When you pull an arrow all the way back, your aim is that it would hit the target. And that is what we want to do when we're praying. We want our prayer to be fervent. We want it to be hot. We want our prayer to be ignited with the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And we want it to avail. We want it to be able to pass through the heavenlies, to pass through the enemy's uh, boundaries and his hindrances and his blockades and his imps. And everything that is trying to hinder our prayer from getting to the throne of God. You may say God can hear everything. Oh, yes, God is omniscient. He also knows everything. And, and he's omnipotent. He's almighty. And uh, he's omniscient. He's all present. Uh, praise the Lord. But we have something to do. There's a structure that has been created between the earth and the heavenlies. And that is when the enemy got kicked out. And he resides in those heavenlies. And his intention is try to block our prayer. So we want to pray fervently. Amen. We want to pray effectually. Also effectually means that we agree with Take what God honor. is saying. With that, Take we go honor. to the, our next king point. Watch which out. is why should we come away stronger and in. more consecrated after praying and petitioning and talking with God? Well, we find out that we should come away stronger, more consecrated, and full of more faith when we come away talking to God. Because when we go into prayer with the Lord, we will unite with the Holy Spirit. And the scriptures say in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17 through 18, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. It goes on to tell us in verse 18, but we all with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. And we are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. So what we're saying here is that when we come before the Lord, we come before the presence of the Lord with the spirit of the living God, partnered with the spirit of the living God. 
And, and, and what happens to us is when we come into the face of the Lord, God begins to shine, amen, back down upon us. His glory begins to invade our atmosphere. Hallelujah. And the Passion Translation teaches us, now the Lord, I'm referring to the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Wherever he is, there is freedom. Glory to God. So we don't have to be hindered in our prayer because when the spirit comes in, he also breaks the yokes and destroys the yokes and looses the bounds. Glory to God that would hinder us in our natural life so that we could go forth in our spirit life before the Lord. The Passion Translation says in verse 18, we can all draw close to him with the veil removed from our faces and with no veil, we all become like mirrors who brightly reflect, listen, I like this, who brightly reflect the glory of the Lord Jesus. And why is that? Because we are being transfigured while we're praying into the very image of God as we move from one brighter level, hallelujah, to, to glory, to another brighter level. And you know, this is actually the glorious transfiguration for us that comes from nobody but the Lord, who is that spirit so my god so when we come before the lord we come amen and when we come before his presence we come to him and we're more consecrated we're more uh soul out we're rendering ourselves after all uh, our bodies is the temple of the holy ghost and we get the idea uh, from the Passion Translation that talks to about being unveiled. Remember when Moses met with God, amen, and he came back away from meeting with God and talking with God, which is a form of his prayer, his face was glowing and his face was so bright that the children of Israel could not even stand to look on Moses. And that was the Old Testament. How is it now that this new covenant that, that we're in, the New Testament, far exceeds the old in glory? Hallelujah. So when we bow our knees and when we bow our head and we humble our hearts and we come before God, we're being transfigured. We're being transformed in his presence. The glory of the Lord is lighting upon us. How many know that when the glory of the Lord comes, he brings his weight. He brings his strength. He brings his might. Hallelujah. So when we come to God in prayer, we come to be fervent with God. We come to be effectual with God. We come to avail and prevail with God. Glory to God. Amen. We don't have a veil on our face anymore. The only veil we adorn is our bodies because we live in this natural earth. So we have an earth suit. But beyond that, glory to God, we have this earthen treasure inside of us that is the excellency of god so when we come before him we come hallelujah that he may change us into him more and more from we go from glory to glory from one brightness to another brightness and it also does have some cosmetic value when we come away from the lord the glory of the lord is alighted on our faces and alighted on our skin i'm getting excited but when we come away from being with our father our father the provider our father the protector our father glory to god who intercedes amen for us with the spirit of the living god with jesus before the throne ever living not just to be our priest but to make intercession for us we should come away hallelujah renewed refreshed restored invigorated empowered my god we should come away like that when we come from the of the presence of the lord in prayer another king point says that we ought to be careful uh, about and mindful about the location from which we pray amen yes we're in the earth but did you know that Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6 says and hath raised us up together who has God has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus glory to God what does that mean I like another translation that says he raised us up with Christ the exalted one and we extended with him into the glorious perfection and listen to this the authority of the heavenly realm but we are now co-seated as one with christ 
So we're seated in heavenly places from where our blessings flow. Although our bodies are in the earth, amen, and we're alive in the spirit, but we're alive after Christ because of his resurrection. And because he rose, we rose, and we're able to walk in the newness of life. So let us to pray with our minds set on heaven, that we're seated in the throne room with Christ, that we're seated in the throne room with the Father. Why? Because we're a royal priesthood. Why? Because we're a peculiar people. Why? Because we're a holy nation. Glory to God. And we're priests and kings before God. My next king point uh, 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 says to us that, uh, uh, and I ask the question, why do we have a right to ask and petition before God? And the other thing is, why do we have a right to receive from God? Why is that? Because God gave his son and his son gave his life. And hallelujah, because he gave his life, he gave me eternal life. And he said in John chapter 16, verse 24, he said, hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. And then he says, ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. So we have a right to ask. Why? Because Jesus said that we can. Glory to God. Glory to God. The other translation says, until now, you have asked nothing uh, of the Father for anything in my name. But now ask. And guess what? Keep on asking and keep on asking and you will receive. So why? That your joy may be full and complete. I like one of Bishop Green's favorite scriptures that says it's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Glory to God. Glory to God to give us the kingdom. So we don't come before the Lord praying as though we don't have a right. We come boldly before the throne of grace to find help. Amen. To find help and to meet our father there, to meet our uh, prince of peace there, to meet our king there, to meet our intercessor there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we come boldly before God. We come to prevail. We come fervently before him. We come glory to God that we have a right to be there. We come because we have ascended with him. Amen. When he rose, we rose. So we have a right to be there. We have a right to ask and to keep on asking to God be the glory so with that in mind I want us to pray and we're going to pray knowing that the father amen has given us access glory to God to the throne of God and he has given us authority that we may enter therein Amen. He has given us authority and he's given us the power, the exousia of Jesus name that we can petition him. And we're not coming like we're not going to receive. We're coming because we believe God and because we believe God, we shall receive from God. Amen. Somebody. Amen. Somebody. So let us bow our heads now and go before the throne of God. Amen. Uh, before we continue any further. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to do the prayer tonight. So let us bow our heads in prayer. And I want you to pray with me. Glory to God. Don't just look at the screen. Don't just look at uh, the other people that's on the screen. Pray into their end. Every time there's an opportunity for you to encounter God, you should make it your business to meet with God. I don't care who's in the room. I don't care who's standing around. I don't care who's on the screen. It's a relationship, a relationship thing. It's between you and your father, you and your God. Glory to God. So you should never just let anybody else just pray. You ought to agree with them in prayer. Glory to God. Let's go before the throne room tonight. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we just thank you that you are Lord, our King, and our Savior. We thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, that you gave Jesus, hallelujah, for the remedy of sin for the whole world. And Father, we thank you that you gave us the strength my God, and you broke the shackles off of our life, and you gave us the strength to come to you. And even
even as we come to you now, God, in the name of Jesus, we come humbly. And Father, we come, hallelujah, to submit ourselves before you. Father, we come to you right now and we say if there's anything that we might have said by word, if there's anything that we might have did by deed, we ask you in the name of Jesus to blot out our sins, blot out our transgression in the name of Jesus, wash us and purge us through and through and through and through. But we seek your face, uh, God, and we seek your presence uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, and Father, even as we come, glory to God, uh, we break through principalities and powers. Uh, even as we come, Lord God, uh, we break through every hindrance in the name of Jesus uh, that would try to stop and hinder our prayer and our petition from getting unto you, Lord God. Uh, and in the name of Jesus, us, uh, in the authority of that name. Uh, we come, Lord, tonight, glory to God. Uh, we come for our healing uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, God, some among us have been sick, uh, and some that ask us to pray for them have been sick. Uh, but we come in the name of Jesus uh, for the healing that you died for. Uh, my God, you were beat with many stripes uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, but by your stripes, uh, we are are healed uh, and Lord we receive that healing Lord God uh, and we count not hallelujah your whippings in vain uh, we count not the blood shed from your broken body in vain uh, but we come to receive uh, in the neo shandi abasaya we come to receive that healing uh, we come to receive glory to god wholeness in our bodies uh, in our mind uh, in our spirit uh, nothing missing lord god uh, and nothing broken in the name of jesus uh, we came because the so a life of God, Lord God, abides down on the inside of us. And in your spirit, there is no sickness. In your spirit, Lord God, there is no disease. In your spirit, Lord God, there is no poverty. In your spirit, Lord God, my God, we come, Lord God, to that wealthy place in you. We come to that place of abundance, Lord God. And hallelujah, we ask you now lord god uh, let your blessings flow uh, my god from the throne of heaven uh, all those that are standing in need god uh, you died for their prosperity uh, your word of god said that you were made poor uh, my god that we can be made rich uh, and we receive tonight uh, lord god that you hallelujah daily loadeth us with benefit uh, we receive of your bountifulness uh, we receive of your goodness lord god uh, we open our hands Lord God uh, and we receive in our hearts uh, in the name of Jesus uh, the glory of the living God uh, hallelujah Jesus uh, we decree and declare that we are the temple my God of the Holy Ghost uh, tonight uh, our body is your body uh, in the name of Jesus uh, fill us again Lord God uh, fill us up with your spirit uh, to overflowing Lord God uh, you said out of our bodies uh, out of our bellies uh, shall flow rivers uh, my god of living water let the river flow uh, in the name of jesus uh, loose the line administrator hallelujah for a few minutes uh, so that the river can begin to flow uh, the river of life uh, the river of goodness uh, the river of wholeness uh, the river of health uh, hallelujah uh, the river the river of peace uh, the river the 
receive the river of abundance in you, Lord God. Nothing missing, nothing broken, but we are everywhere holding you. Hallelujah. Oh, a life, the life of God. My God and I'm Oshania in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we come, Lord God. We come for revelation. We come for understanding, God. We come for marriage in you, Lord God. Our minds be renewed. Let us to put on the mind of Christ tonight. Let us to be a witness indeed. And Lord, witness within us. In the most shiny of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now I'm going to ask you to go to your high form of praise. Go to the high form of prayer. And bless the Lord. And tell him, thank you. 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 Thank Come on and magnify Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you tonight. Thank you for the great Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We can come in the morning. In the name of Jesus. When you humble yourself, hallelujah. He will exalt you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my God, my God, it's two seasons. Let today be your two season. May be your two season. How about you? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Bless the bishop on tonight, God. Bless him in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord God. Bless him, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Ghost. We thank you. Glory to God. Thank God in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You get the glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey, and I know you feel better. Yes. I know you can feel the freedom of God right now. I know you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can feel the freedom of the Spirit of the living God. Right now. Right now. I know you can feel Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I know you feel better. Hey, God. You know that you understand that a change took place. And an exchange took place tonight. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the divine exchange. Holy Ghost, we thank you for the divine exchange. Amen. So as we move forward in the name of Jesus, glory to God, we're open to receive the more. Eba Shandi Abasaya. Thank you, Lord. And we're going to make our declarations tonight in the name of Jesus. You don't have to say uh, the scripture that is coming from. Amen. Anybody that would like the slides, we're going to make sure that you get them. But our declarations are coming from 1 John 4 and 13, Romans 8 and 16, 1 John 5 and 6, and Jude verse 20. Amen. And so our declarations, our declarations, glory to God, our declarations, glory to God. Amen. So since they're on the screen, you can say them with me. Amen. And just declare out loud. Um, Brother Administrator going to ask you to 
mute the lines now so that we're not all saying them at different times. Amen. But we are going to say them. I'm going to say them and then you can say them. Amen. After me, God has given me his spirit. The spirit of God in me witnesses that I am a child of God. The witness of the spirit of God in me is the spirit of truth. When I pray with the spirit of God, I also build up my most holy faith in him. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. We thank God for the declarations tonight of his spirit in us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So our topic, can I get a witness? Amen. Came from uh, 1 John 5, 9 through 10. But uh, and I was telling you that last week, glory to God, that um I was talking to you last week about the the uh, ways that I had encountered God. And amen. And I have these questions for you. If you wanted to jot them down, I have these questions for you. Amen. Because last week I shared uh, how I encountered God and how the Lord was able to draw me. So I, I want you to jot it down or keep in mind or ponder to do a sila about uh, thinking about these things, okay? Uh, uh, ponder, in what ways have you encountered God or the spirit of the Lord or the resurrected Christ? That's a question for you to ponder, to take a sila moment and, and pause and take time to think on God so that those encounters are fresh in your mind. Mm -hmm. I remember Bishop Green testifying to us that uh, he had the Bible in his hand uh, when the Lord was calling him to minister and the Bible actually lit up in his hands. And I'll never forget that. That was such an impact to me. He said that the word of God began to glow in his hands. That was a supernatural encounter with God. I remember my son walking uh, with my son to church and the sky had been cloudy it had rained really hard it was a summer day and we were walking uh to church it had stopped raining but it was still good and cloudy outside and we happened to look up and there was this gray cloud in the sky but along the edges of the cloud it looked like the lightning had attached itself to it and it had a beautiful glow around it the etchings on the cloud Though it was a dark cloud, was like nothing we had ever seen before, ever. And I think Kai might have been about six or seven years old. And um, I said, do you see that? He said, yeah, my God sure can draw. Ah, oh, Lord have mercy. I would have never thought God being an artist, but that was in the mind of my son. And I never forgot that. So those encounters that you have had with God, those moments and those unique supernatural uh encounters that you've had with him and those times that uh he made himself real to you think on those ponder those things let them come back to life in your heart and in your mind okay and 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 those things that god did that grabbed your undivided attention ponder on those things I told you about the dreams I've had. I told you about some of the visions and stuff that I have. But the reason why I'm trying to say this to you is because there's coming a time and a need for you to share them, share them, share them. Share them with a friend uh, when you're talking to a friend. Share them with a child, could be a, a niece, a nephew, a grandchild, your child, a cousin. Share them with a neighbor share them 
with somebody when God opens the door and gives you an opportunity. Uh, the reason why I say this to you is because it's a, a, a it's a it's a um, rapport builder. It's a bridge builder. It's a door opener that you could share these opportunities. You know, just as a matter of fact, you know, um, you could say, you know, you know, I've had an encounter that was very unique. And when it happened to me, I didn't understand what it was. Draw in their interest so that you pique their interest. You'll be surprised that they want to hear your story. You'll be surprised that they want to hear your encounter. But if they're not exciting to you, they're not going to be exciting to them. But if you take some time to ponder and to think on those things where God made his self real to you, where God had you had those supernatural encounters with the Lord. When you think on them, when you keep them fresh in your mind, when you keep them fresh in your heart, it makes them easy to share. Amen. And then when you're finished doing that, turn around and ask them, is there something unique that they have ever encountered that you have never heard before? Was there some experience that they ever had that they couldn't explain? Turn around and ask them. Don't ask them with the mind of giving them advice. Don't ask them with the mind of trying to interpret their dream or interpret their story. Just ask them, show some interest. Be quiet around them and allow them to tell their story and to tell them what uh, happened to them and what went on with them. And take that encounter and that opportunity back with you to prayer. And when you're praying for them, bring those things that they have shared with you before the Lord so that God can begin to open up their understanding and so that God can create another opportunity for you to be able to share with them. It may be the next time they will be open to hear your interpretation or to hear your advice, but don't do that before you have gone before the presence of the Lord with their name and with their encounter, because you may not be the one to interpret their uh, a dream. You may not be the one uh, to give them advice, but God will instruct you in your prayer time as you're calling their name, what to do with what they have shared with you. Amen. You may be setting up the next person or the next witness to come behind them to be able to, that God could use them to open that up. Amen. Glory to God. I wanted to share that as a point of how to witness, a tool to witness. Amen. And I know you might say that the time is short and we may not have these opportunities. We may not see them again, but you need to allow God to be God. Don't get ahead of him. Don't try to be the Holy Ghost for them. Just use the opportunity that God has given you. Amen. And come away. Pre-eventually, he will give you another opportunity or he'll give someone the opportunity to come behind you. It's supposed to pour water. Amen. You know, the scripture says that one sowed the seed, one poured the water. But you know who gave the increase? God gave the increase. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. I wanted to touch on just two other points uh, that we went over last week because we didn't get the opportunity to really get the visuals for that. And I want to be able to go back into that. Uh, the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. I said the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. But is that true today? No, that's not true. Because the word of God tells us, um, the word of God tells us emphatically that for the invisible things from Romans verse chapter one, verse 20, it tells us for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. And so they are without an excuse. And from there, we went to the arguments of congruity and we started with the cosmological uh, argument. And the cosmological argument told us 
that it argues for the existence of God by cause and effect. Since the cosmos is the Greek word for world, showing the immense universe, showing its creation, therefore there must be a divine creator. And this creator exists in a greater degree than everything that he has created. And it's hard to look in the depths of the universe and believe and not believe that God doesn't exist. Or it's hard to look in the universe and not believe that God exists. There had to be a cause. There had to be an effect. And there had to be a divine creator who put it all together. Let's go to the slide. I'm going to pull up the slide. So on the first slide here, where you see the universe, amen, the top of the top universe that you see is called the uh, Milky Way. This is out in the universe, and this is exactly where we live. Isn't that immense? And isn't it intense? That is where we live. And you can see that it's revolving and it's turning slowly. Uh -huh. And I said to you that you would think that where we live out in the cosmos would probably be in the center point of the universe where you see the light coming out in the middle. My God. But guess what? That is not where we live. As a matter of fact, we're nowhere near the center of the galaxy if you look to the right you will see our galaxy has arms these are called elliptical arms they are solar elliptical arms that as the bubble in the middle where the light the illumination is spins out of these arms and the reason why these arms are the center is lit like it is is because we have suns that are greater than our suns, but we're going to get to that next. Okay, so on the bottom right hand side of this uh, of this presentation, on the bottom of the left, you'll see the sun, and where you see the sun is about one two is about the third arm in. It's a skinny little arm too. It's a fat, a thin arm on the outside. Then it's a great big arm, second. And then the third arm, that's a small little narrow arm. That's where our sun is, our sun is. And guess what? That is where our solar system abides. All of our planets are in that same particular area, that little pin dot that you see that is where our sun glory be to god that is where we are so we're out here with this big galaxy spinning around and we're nowhere near the center but we are pointed right in about the third little narrow arm is where our solar system is where our sun is and that is where we are can i get a witness tonight look at the magnitude of how God's power is holding this out oh, in another space another church and group. where we are and yet everything is turning. You don't feel like you're falling. You don't feel like you're dizzy. Glory to God, as a matter of fact, you don't even feel that you're moving. But that's where we are and everything is in motion. Everything is in motion. And if you look to the right of this uh, particular screenshot, you'll see two galaxies. Our galaxy is on the top. I made it bigger so that you can see that. But on the left-hand side, you see two galaxies. Amen? The bottom galaxy is where we are. That is called the Milky Way. The other galaxy, which is our neighbor, is called Andromeda. The galaxy of Andromeda. Just like our galaxy, it has its own suns, moons, stars, planets, solar system, and multiplex of universes inside of it, just like ours. Can I get a witness tonight? God said, let there be, and it was. 
And when God said, let there be, amen, all of these lights went out in the midst of the darkness and began to form these spirals of, of, of um, mass and gases and matter out into the space of darkness. Amen. If we look at the next slide, we'll see that I wanted to show you the difference in the sun. Now, that first slide that's on the top of it, let it roll. Let it roll. Because what I'm trying to show you is that our sun started at about maybe the third step in past the planets. You saw our sun. So if, let it move, is it rotating? Brother administrator, let it move, let it move. Okay, so that last, when we get to that last star, it is called, the, it is called uh, uh, VY Carnis Majoris, before it is a star called the Beltegeist, before it is a star called Rigel, and then, before that is our sun, okay? Well, our sun is a teeny tiny little dot compared to all these other stars and suns that's out there. Can I get a witness tonight? And yet God are holding them all in the palm of his hand as well as holding us. Understand that each sun burns brighter than our sun. Each one of those suns are bigger than our sun. Each one of those suns has a, a capacity of explosion greater than our sun. Our sun is about 4.6 billion years old. It's called a yellow dwarf star. It's 92.96 uh, million miles away from the earth. And God is holding it in the palm of his hand so that it doesn't fall down on us. So it doesn't burn us up. It might burn the grass sometime, but God doesn't allow it to burn us up. It may even burn flowers, amen, sometime, but God doesn't allow it to burn us up. The ant is still able to crawl on the ground. The worm is still able to wiggle down on the ground. My God, my God, and yet not be burnt up by the immense uh, capacity of the sun. And that's just our sun next to our earth. But then next to that, the seventh sun in line is called Thank you, Jesus. And it is the seventh sun. It's a blue star and it's a super giant star. It's approximately 860 light years away from the earth. Look what I said. 860 light years away from the earth itself can i get a witness tonight my god hallelujah and yet it doesn't uh pull our sun into its gravity it doesn't pull our planets into its gravity it doesn't even pull our moons into its gravity nor the other moons of the other planets into its gravity and yet its heat is much more intense my God, my God. And that is only the seventh sun. When we move further into the screenshot, there's a ninth sun that's even larger than that sun. And it's called the Beltagais, uh sun. And it's a super giant uh, red star. Uh, that's what it's called. And listen, it's about 642.5 light years away from the earth. My God, I can't even uh, fathom uh, uh, 642.5 light years. You know that God does math exponentially. God does physics, amen, and chemistry out on a scale that we can't even fathom. Even the scientists can only approximate the distance and the sizes and the widths and the mass of these giant luminaries that are sitting out in the space to give us light. 
And yes, you can see them in the nighttime. You wouldn't even know which one it is, but you can see them in the nighttime. You can see them when the skies are all lit up and they're winking back and forth at you. But out of these suns is a massive explosion going on. And yet the Lord allows us to exist through all of this. Can I get a witness tonight? The last sun that I wanted to show you, and I'm coming to an end of my a time here is the um, the Carners. It's called the Carners, V Y Carners uh, Majors. It is the largest known star in our entire solar system. Amen. It's larger uh, than all the other stars that we have seen. And listen, I've named Beltegeis as the ninth star. This one is about the tenth or the eleventh star. So our star looks like a, 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 a little pin compared to these stars and immensity. It looks like a little pin. And this particular star is 4,000 light years away from the earth. Listen what I said. It's 4,000 light years away from the earth. Can I get a witness tonight? My God, my God, you ought to understand that God created everything. He created the cosmos. And though we haven't been able to get in a spaceship and go out there and see what's out there. Amen. Do you know that astronauts can't even come close to this? We had to send satellites further and further out in space that were able to shoot the lens of the camera far out into the greater far reaches of the universe to be able to take these pictures because if man was to try to get closer or closer to these he would fry up not only would he fry up the rocket ship it would burn up with him in it and disintegrate my god this star is six uh, 613.85 million miles uh, away from us. My God, I can't even fathom the math. And it's 1,500 times larger than our little sun. Can you even imagine? Who can argue that God doesn't exist after you hear facts like these? And then... The scripture says in the Old Testament, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. My God, that was Genesis 1 and 1. In the New Testament, John 1, 1 through 3 says, in the beginning was what? The word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. It says the same was in the beginning with God. It says that all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made out of everything that you've seen god created it by the word of god my god not only so it says in him was life and the life was the light of men to going to my finale in this next slide brother administrator if you could bring up the next slide on the teleological argument we find, we find in the teleological argument that this argues for the point of intelligent design. Just look at the intelligence of God, how our earth is designed and the scenic views that you can see here. And he's showing us that God is a master architect and a master builder that he has infinite wisdom. He's able to draw up the blueprints himself. Hallelujah. He knew where to place the galaxies. He knew where to place the stars. He knew how to create these scenic vistas that we, we can see. And he knew where to place the rivers. He knew where to place the mountain range. He knew how to style and shape the snowflakes. He knew all of this. Can I get a witness tonight? If you would just take a look at that slide, look at the mountains and how the water cascades over the mountain there. My God, my God, it's a beauty to behold. I'm in the second slide. 
for creation. I'm in the second slide for the scenic views. And you can see the waterfall. That's, that's where I am. And you can see the waterfall, how the water is cascading over the side of these cliffs and these mountains here. Not only so, God allowed his beautiful uh, rainbow to come through there. Amen. And the rainbow is the covenant of his goodness toward us that he wouldn't destroy the earth by water anymore. Look at the beautiful scenic view with with the, the tree. It looks like it's the tree of life. We can't say that, but that's how it looks. If I could imagine the tree of life in the garden, that's probably what I would be um, thinking about. Yet the trees of life, uh, uh, God said, uh, in heaven, uh, uh, on both sides of the river and they have fruits bearing for the healing of the nations. But look how God created this scenic view here with this beautiful, beautiful rainbow going around the tree and the tree set in the city. It's so artistic. God, hallelujah, is able to be able to create with master precision. I don't think there's an artist that can draw like God. I don't think there's an artist that can create and design like God. And if you look down in the last one, look at the water and he allowed the rainbow to go around the, the, the uh, sides of the water as the water transcended uh, over this beautiful flowery range. Our God exists. If you would just look out at his creation, you could see that God exists by the things that are visible. Never mind that he's invisible, but you can see him by the things that are visible. If you back up one more to the slide uh, prior to that one, we can see how he changed the colors of the trees from one season to a next. The center one shows us autumn, amen. And then out on the right, it shows us sort of like a springtime. And on the uh, left, it shows us like a uh, 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 summertime where the beauty of the greening of the forest and uh, uh, forest ridge is there where you can see it. God has created all of this with his intelligent design. I say to you tonight that there is a witness in the earth. There is a witness in the universe and there is a witness inside of us. And I thank you tonight for joining me in the winner's circle. And I hope that what we have learned and seen tonight has had a great impact, hallelujah, on how you know your God and how you experience your God and your relationship with your God. I share with you because it makes it easier for you to be able to share with others. You don't have to wonder what am I gonna say? You don't have to wonder if a particular scripture is gonna come to mind. When you're with that person, amen, or God has given you an opportunity to stand uh, with someone and you're going to the grocery store or you're standing out or you're at a picnic, wherever you should be, you can look at the wonder of creation and be a witness. You can look at the wonder of God's creation and really be a witness. Can I get a witness tonight? Well, I'm not going to go any further. I'm going to stop right here. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to end right here because I could really go on and on and on, but I don't want to do that. The reason why I don't want to do that is because we're not going to be able to contain it all. Hallelujah. I hope we go away. It's nine o'clock. Just remembering. Amen to think on God. Think on your encounters. Think on those things that have uh, ministered to your heart about who God is and then share them and think on the beauty uh, of the world, the universe and the earth that we live in and share it with somebody. Somebody needs to hear good news. Amen, we've heard enough bad news. We need to hear some good news and be a witness unto the Lord. Amen, I bless you in Jesus name. And tonight I'm gonna ask our Elder Green if she would just close us out. Oh um, no, Elder Green, I picked on you before. I'm sorry, I'm gonna ask our prophet is Harris, Janine Harris, to close us out in a word of prayer tonight. Amen. Administrator, if you would unmute the lines. Hallelujah. And she Hallelujah. can go in and we can go in with her. Thank Amen. you, Jesus.
Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father God, come on, let's put our hands together. Come on, let's lift our hearts before the Lord. Hallelujah. In matchless name. Hallelujah. Father God, come on, let's lift our hands before the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The supreme ruling of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seeing, knowing Thank you, all. Jesus. Omnipresent. Our seeking, be aware of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God of intelligence. He is the God of design. He is the God of customized. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Of great things. Hallelujah. He is the God of physics. Hallelujah. 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 He is the God of trajectories. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God of the stratosphere and the atmosphere. Hallelujah. He is the God that was and still is to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the God that is stretching out his hand even now and still speaking. Hallelujah. He is the God whose frequency is still speaking to the earth. He is the God who is still creating and still performing. Hallelujah. He is the God, hallelujah, that's still making clear. Thank you, Jesus. Making known his design unto us. Come on, let's magnify. Hallelujah, Jesus. And the Lord, the supernatural thing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Identify him as the son. I tell that already the Abbasa. Identify him as a witness of the spirit. Identify him as the keeper and sovereign Lord of your soul. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, identify him as the sovereign testimony in your heart. Come yes, on, Lord. Identify him. Hallelujah. Give a positive ID. Hallelujah. I tell that already the Abbasa. He has done great things among us. Yes, Lord God. Father God, we pray now, God, as we come before you to this evening, we pray, Master Teacher, that you would leave these things upon our hearts. Thank God, you, we Jesus. pray now that we will continue to be educated by your knowledge. God, we Thank pray you, that Jesus. you would open us up to give us capacity to learn. Father, we pray now that you would put the spirit down on inside of us to spring it up and bring it forth. Thank you, Jesus. We pray now that you would give us intelligence to witness your word. Father, yes, we Lord. pray now that we would have precision and, and mindset, God. Yes, How God. To speak to your people. Father, we pray for accuracy. You, we Jesus. pray for boldness. We pray for courage. Yes, yes God, Lord God. We pray for insight, God. God, yes, we Lord. pray for knowledge of how to deal yes, with individuals. Lord, in the name God, of we thank you now, God. Thank, thank you, We praise you now on being able to do and execute the thank purpose, Jesus. God. Yes, God. Designed, God. We pray God, that we would have God. That you would increase, God. God, we pray now that we would lose our agendas, God. God, we would pray that you would change our eyesight, that we would see what you see, God, that we would hear what you hear, God, that we would know what you know, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, as a collective body, bring us progressively. Yes. Thank bring you, us Jesus. progressively, God. In the name of Thank Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Open up, God. Move yes, past Jesus. our traditions. Glory to Move God. Past our, our blockages, God. Move yes, past Jesus. our stumbling blocks, God. Open up learning to us. Bring our conscious mind in, God. In the name of Jesus, relevate, God. Relevate inside of us, God. In the, illuminate those dark Thank places, you, God. In the, let your Glory word be God. true before us, God. Hallelujah. Tangible, evident experience, God. Bring new encounters. Let men Thank testify, you, Jesus. God, that they have seen Glory to God. You, Hallelujah. God. In the name Thank of you, Jesus, Jesus. we pray now. That you would bless the in, the in the name of Jesus, the in the speakers, name of the ones Jesus. who come together, to so rightfully declare your truth Lord in the earth. Illuminate and fall on them, God. Thank you, Jesus. Refresh everything that you want, God. Thank you, Jesus. Touch Pastor Turner in a great way, God. Touch uh, uh, the administrator behind thank the scenes in a great way. Jesus. Oh, God, we thank God. you for skillfulness, oh, God. Touch every pastor on this line tonight, God, that they would be able to feed their sheep Hallelujah, God. in the name of Jesus. Give them yes, capacity Lord. to give more, God. In Thank the name you, of Jesus, pour yes, into God. them, God. Let them sleep and dream God. and hear and yes, see God. and know, God. Hallelujah. Give them wisdom, divine insight, God. God. For their members, oh God, in the name of Jesus, cause them to hear, God. Yes, Lord God. God. On a whole nother frequency and level, Lord. Thank God. you, Thank Jesus. You. And then, God, uh, forgive us for our shortcomings, God, that we might be able to receive you, oh God, and, and touch us in a special way. We give you the glory, God, until we meet again at this particular place God keep us hungry and thirsty keep us testifying oh God of your goodness and your glory we give you praise in Jesus name if you believe it down on in your heart to say amen amen, amen. thank you amen, amen. come on bless amen. his name amen. thank you Lord. come on praise
Thank you, Baba Basi. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and praise him. Thank you. We worship him. You are dismissed. If you have to leave, we're just going to stay here a minute and worship the Lord with William McDowell. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. And I bless you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless you. You are dismissed. If you can go, if you want to go, we're just going to stay here and worship a few minutes. That was the church that, um, that, um, I don't know if you remember one time we went to a church that was doing a Halloween thing. A Halloween service or something. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's the idea. That's the church. Ah, okay. Yeah, the young lady sent me an invite of some of. Oh, kitty, let's go. Uh, did Mary get his food? Did, did she get us some yellow cake? No, the cat food. The cat? Oh, I don't know. I know I had bought some, but she, I had gave her money to go and buy her the soft one because I couldn't find the kind that he normally eats. She said something about fancy kitten or yeah, something fan, kitten. Fancy feet. That I was it, fancy those, feet? Yeah. Oh, well, I saw a whole lot of fancy feet, but it oh. said for adult cat. Oh, okay. No, no, it didn't say for kitten. Oh. You're watching because he's eating up them chips, so I, I gotta sweep my floor. Hey, you just fried. Fried. <laughs> yeah. I'm basically done. I'm basically done. Do the stove and the pots. Okay.